work on our homework. This is a great because our teachers are with us to answer any questions we might have. We usually finish all or most of our homework. This is important because after extra innings, we get home later than normal. It is nice to be able to enjoy the rest of our nights. I also like this time because I get to hang out with other third grade friends of mine in different classes. It is really fun time and puts me in a happy mood before I start learning. Next, we have Ariana Selichek from fourth grade talking about skills and warm up. Good evening, school, more, school board members. My name is Ariana Selichek, and I'm a fourth grade student who attends extra, extra innings program at Harwood Elementary School. I am going to tell you about the second part of extra innings, which is our skills warm up. We start out by practicing rainbow breathing, which helps us focus and calm down from the busy day we had. Next comes the fun part, our warm up games. In reading class, we play a game called Cell Search, where we break words into small parts. This helps us read them better than we see them in our story later. In math, we do many fun warm-ups. Some warm-ups are math stack, battles, different cahoots, and, and a really fun game called Blue Kit. We sometimes watch video clips and play fluency games and work with partners. These help us practice our math arts and in a exciting way and help us remember some skills we have learned before. I like extra innings a lot because I get to see teachers I have had before and get get to get to learn in really fun ways. And finally, we have Dom Savko from fifth grade to talk about content practice. Good evening, school board members. My name is Dominic Savko, and I am a fifth grade student who attends the extra innings program at Hartwood Elementary School. I am going to tell you about the third part of extra innings, which is our content practice in math class. Ms. Billings gives us lots of multiplication and division practice problems. We also do sprints and sometimes word problems. She gives us each a progress track to track how we're doing and how we are growing. We review many different ways to help us solve word problems. We use the cube strategy to break them all down. It's really fun and helps me understand exactly what I need to do in reading class. What did I need to do? In reading class, Miss Artieri uses tax card to make fun make learning fun. We do activities about TDAs, figurative language, and main ideas. All of the lessons we do in both reading and math help us to remember we've, what we have learned all year in fifth grade. It helps me be, be a successful on assignments and tests that we have in the, in the regular classroom. And we have one final part, the incentives and celebrations. All three of you come on up. Luke, you can start. The last part of extra innings are the incentives and celebrations. Throughout the extra innings program, we earn a daily ticket for every day that we attend. We can also earn tickets for going above and beyond. With our learning, these tickets are put into a weekly draw for a prize on Thursday of every week. The prizes are really cool and there is a lot to pick from. At the end of extra innings, we get to have a celebration party for all 
for our hard work we put in during the 11-week program. Last year, we had a pizza party and watched the movie. In the past, there have also been ice cream parties and much more. I can't wait to see what the theme will be this year because our teachers always make it a home run. Also, at the celebration, we draw names for more prizes. Those students that didn't miss a day get a perfect attendance certificate. Finally, all of the students get an end of extra innings gift to thanks us, thanks us, us for all of our hard work. We feel proud of ourselves of completing the extra innings program. Fabulous job, guys. Thank you so much. And next we have some um, teachers and students from Fairview. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Gabby Benelli. I am one of the uh, teachers for extra innings at Fairview. I work with the third grade group and we have Miss Julia Puntil. She works with third grade today. Um, and we have some of our third grade students they are gonna come up, introduce themselves and tell them, tell you guys one of their favorite things about extra innings. And I know someone's gonna say me, so let's see. <laughs> Hi, my name's Aubrey, and my favorite part about extra innings is getting to learn more stuff for math and reading. Hi, my, hi, my name is Adelaide Woods, and my favorite part about extra innings is the great teachers, they are especially Miss Pontil and Miss Pamela. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eloise. Um, the, my favorite thing about extra innings is um, doing my homework with my best friends. Hi, my name is Nico Orgidis. My favorite thing about extra innings is that we get to do our homework, and then after we have, we can play F while we're at home. So for tonight, we're doing an ELA lesson, English language arts lesson. Um, we pre-read the text with the students, and they went through and annotated the text. Um, we have them number the paragraphs to help when they go back to find text evidence when they answer their questions. So um, that's up there for you as an example. And then we will be starting with um, a little bit of comprehension skills. I don't need like so full time. <laughs> right, guys. All right, so first let's tell everybody why do we want to talk about paragraphs? Why do we need to them? Nico? So we can find out the text that we didn't really know Perfect. So let's give them a little bit of background knowledge. We read this story from Forest of the Oceans. This was a very exciting story about kelp. We learned a lot, right? Um, but the importance of kelp, what it's used for, things like that. So we went through, we numbered our paragraphs. The kids also have a copy too where they numbered it beforehand. Um, so usually we always focus on a skill. So this skill set for this informational passage was text and graphic features. So we talked about headings. What are headings? Why are headings so important, you guys? What, what, what's the point of a heading, Aubrey? Because it tells you what the next part is going to be about. Yeah, that one specific part, right? So to focus on that skill for this passage, we are going to do a heading sort with a, with a partner. So the kids have. Um, they have four headings from the passage, and then they have four pieces of evidence, right? So working with your partner, you are going to sort which piece of evidence falls under the correct heading. Now, when you do this, what are we going to ask you to have proof how, how you know that it's right? Eloise? Yeah, back in the paragraph, find it, and then what do you think we want you to do with it once you find it? Yeah, we're going to highlight it, right? 
Okay, so working with your partners right now, you have your four headings and your four pieces of evidence, and I want you guys to start forming them. Your four
students will have a question, which is which words from the passage are most alike in meaning? And again, stress that they'll be working with their partners. We also try to use some engagement techniques um, and strategies for this. They'll be using these little paddles to say um, if they agree that that might be the correct answer choice um, and then maybe explain why. All right, so we're going to learn our vocabulary. All right, so which, which words from the passage are most alike in meaning? What does alike mean? Always similar. Okay, so we're going to find two words that are similar in meaning. All right, let's start with A dart and spread. Dart and spread. Let's go back and tie them in our text. You want to the highlighter, right? Okay, so dart and spread. Turning and talking to your partner, what does dart mean and what does spread mean? Okay, who can tell me what does dark mean? Bob? Going super fast, right? And in this case, it was the fish they were darting by. Okay, how about spread? How they? Yeah, kind of stretching out, expanding. Okay, so again, um, agreeing with your partner, using your paddle, we think dark and spike are alike in meaning. Are they similar in meaning? No, I agree. So let's go ahead and mark, but are we gonna, we should keep going, right? Okay, let's move on to B. All right, B, flourish and survive. Flourish and survive, survive. Turning and talking to your partner, what do scores and survive mean? Again, looking in our text, and then do you think those are alike in meaning? Perfect. All right, B, flourish. What does flourish mean? We're going to talk about it first. What does flourish mean? Help me out. Nika? Uh, flourish means that it grows back. Yeah, it grows really well. If something flourishes, it's growing back. What about survive? Elise? Yes, to be alive. We're alive again. Very good. So what do you think? What did junior partner say? Do we think yes, these are pretty alike, or no? What do you think? Do we agree? Okay, yes. Now, are we going to start blowing you and just go to the next question? No. no, we have to prove. Okay, so this one seems pretty good, but let's move on to C to prove that we think B could be a good answer. All right, in C, we have protect and weaken. Turning and talking, talk with your partner. What do they mean, and do you think they're alike in me? Let's talk. What does protect mean? Adelaide? To keep something safe, right? We love to go protect it. What about weaken? Off? Not strong. Okay, not strong. So what do we think? We think those two words are kind of a lengthy meaning. Not strong. All right, well, we'll use our paddles. What do we think? Okay, I agree. Probably not super lengthy meaning, but let's go ahead and check. So we'll go next to C, but let's check D. <clears throat> All right, for D, we have attached and lucid. Attached and lucid, turning and talking, finding those in the text, what do they mean? And do you think they're alike in meaning? What does attached mean? Always? Say connect. Very good. Nice. What does loosen mean? Ego? Okay. 
Right, and you showed me, what did you show me with the highlighter? Yeah, the, the, the cap became loose off of it, right? So what do we think? Do, they, do we think, yes, those are like a meaning or no? Can you show me your paddles? Yeah, I would say no. So what does that leave us with? We proved the answer choice. B. Very good. So um, we like to really focus a lot on vocab because some of these informational texts have some words that these kids have like are just seeing for the first time. Um, when we dive deeper into the text, we might do some multiple choice questions, having them go back in, find, find some text evidence, and then also working on written response for some short answer questions as well. But I've known these kids since kindergarten, so I think they did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for showing your learning with us, or sharing your learning with us and showing us what you do in extra innings. And thank you to our families for bringing uh, our learners here this evening. We appreciate you and we appreciate the support of our program. So thank you very much. You are certainly welcome to stay for the remainder of our meeting, but we also understand that you may have other things to do as a family and uh, we won't take that personally either way. Ms. Dowd, our, our next part of our superintendent's report is a Fox Chapel Area School District data review. And Dr. Edwards is going to uh, just give a high level overview of some of the school district's data. So I will turn this over to Dr. Edwards. We were also busy seeing our learners yeah. off, so. <laughs> Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, tough act to follow, uh, but I think this is a great transition. Uh, as we dig into some of our data today, I think the hard work of our staff, teachers, uh, and students um, will be showcased tonight. Um, so I'm going to give you a, an overview of a, a number of different data points. Uh, some of which I have already shared with the uh, academic committee, uh, but I wanted to showcase some, some of them. Uh, we're gonna start off by looking at some uh, academic achievement data at our elementary level, specifically PSSAs. Uh, so you'll see here, this is a table of our elementary PSSA uh, achievement, uh, the percentage of proficient and advanced students from 2015 until 2023. And what you'll notice uh, on a number of these charts is that there's kind of a blacked out column. That's, that's the year we did not test due to uh, the uh, pandemic. Um, and one thing we really looked at is where our scores were in 2019 and how we've kind of rebounded since then in 2023, knowing that there were gonna be some hurdles uh, due to the pandemic. Um, but I think you're gonna notice that overall we've, we've had great gains from 2015 and in many cases have rebounded, if not surpassed our uh, achievement um, proficiency rates uh, in 2019 as well. So one thing to uh, showcase here is our fourth grade uh, achievement in 2015. Uh, we have about 80% of our students proficient in advance. And um, this past year, that, that number was up to 90. So uh, an improvement of almost 10%. This next slide is just going to show you a graph on the left. That is our uh, achievement in 2015 compared to 20 or 2023 in grades three, four, and five. And then on the right, you'll see a graph that um, showcases uh, how we compare to the state averages in PSSAs. And you'll see that we, we do um, outperform the states on, on every one of these slides. Um, and in many cases, but almost double. This is uh, elementary mathematics. Uh, we've seen some really nice gains since 2015. In particular, I'll, I'll kind of highlight uh, fourth grade. Um, a notable, notable gains there um, of 18 and half percent. And you can see that on the graph as well on this slide here on the left, and then also how we're um, achieving compared to the state. This slide here shows our science 
Uh, PSSA da data, this uh, science assessment is given in fourth grade at the elementary level. Um, we've always had pretty high achievements uh, starting, uh, you'll see back in 2016, we were at 91%. There's been um, growth throughout uh, this past year. We, we've been, we were at 95%, but overall, um, very strong achievement numbers. And there's our comparison to the state. And you will see uh, the state average for fourth grade science is higher than, than what we saw in ELA and, and math. The next uh, several slides are uh, DMS achievement data. Uh, one thing to note there uh, within DMS are the gains we've seen since 2015. Uh, this here highlights um, the gains in ELA uh, for the PSSA. You'll see uh, in seventh grade in particular, we've had a plus 10% gain since 2015. All of our uh, grade levels uh, have been in the 80, 80% 80 range uh, for the last two years. And there are the uh, graphs of both uh, the comparison to the state and from 2015 to 2023. Uh, this is another area that, that should really be celebrated, the gains we've seen at DMS in uh, the area of mathematics. Uh, you'll see we have 16% gains in both uh, sixth and seventh grade. Um, we were in the 50s at one point, uh, and now we've moved into the 60s and 70s. Um, you know, I think a lot of this has been attributed to the additional instructional minutes we've been able to add at the middle school level and also the instructional su supports through our math extension as well. And those are just our graphs where you can visually see those gains and the comparisons to the state. Uh, our science data, we also saw, we, we, it's been pretty consistently in the 70s. Uh, we've seen improvement throughout. This past year, we did see a big gain, uh, almost 11%. Um, we, we've really been digging in to see, hey, why were we so successful? Um, and so we've been working with our science teachers. I think we attribute a lot of that to our benchmarking, uh, where we use our, the CDT assessment to kind of gauge where students are and what areas they, they could further improve, what skills and standards they could further improve in. You'll see the graphs that support both uh, that data. <clears throat> uh, this here is our keystone assessments. Uh, this data is a little bit different. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that um, from 2016 to 2023, there's some fluctuation. This data is different because it's not necessarily a single cohort or grade level. Uh, these are any number of students that tested in that particular subject during that particular year. Uh, what we typically look at more is our cohorts. Uh, and to give you an example, um, a graduating class in Fox Chapel is typically between 80 and 90% proficient in each of these subject areas. Uh, for keystones. Uh, we also outperform the state. I think the notable one is algebra. Uh, our comparison to the state average is, is um, quite high. <clears throat> I also wanted to share some of our advanced placement data. Uh, Fox Chapel offers 29 AP courses. Uh, and to give you some reference, that's um, uh, most schools, uh, the average is about eight, uh, eight in public schools, 11 in private schools. So we do offer quite a variety of courses. Uh, we This past year, uh, 674 uh, assessments were taken, um, and that was taken by 426 students. The number of students scoring four or five, which is really what colleges are looking for, colleges and universities, was 71.5%. Um, and I did want to highlight, you know, every uh, average for individual courses looks different. So I wanted to show you just our three highest, um, the three courses that were uh, tested the most by Fox Chapel area students uh, were U.S. history, world history, and English, English language and composition. And you'll see that our, our percentage of students achieving a four or five is much higher than, than the average. So, sorry. Yep. <laughs> Just so I understand. So 
this is the number of assessments taken by these 426 kids, but that's not necessarily the total number of kids in these classes. Correct. Okay. Correct. And, and some of them could be taking multiple assessments. Sure. And so not all of our students who are enrolled in AP courses yeah. take, take the assessment. Uh, sometimes it's because they don't attend a college that will accept that credit, sure. uh, but they're interested in the course itself. Uh, the next is just uh, charter school enrollment. Um, we, we took a look at this back to 2019 compared to now. Um, what we did see, we were seeing an increase in enrollment uh, we, a lot of that was, we, we attribute to the pandemic. Uh, people were looking for either uh, cyber charter schools or, or just looking for something different at that time. But we've seen those numbers kind of level out and get back to where they were in 2019. So uh, you'll see in the graph, it kind of goes up and then is coming back down. So I, I showed you AP data, but another thing we're excited about is the course offerings for college and high school. Um, currently, we're offering 17 courses. Uh, they're really tiny there. Uh, they're hard to read, but it's uh, two universities that we're partnering with right now, the University of Pittsburgh and Seton Hill. Uh, right now, for the first semester, we had 47 students enrolled. Uh, to give you an idea, the cost per credit for one of these courses is between $75 and $80. Uh, if you were to break down by credit at University of Pittsburgh, it would be about $839 per credit uh, if you're in-state and over $1,600 if you're out of state. Seton Hill is almost uh, $1,200 a credit. So the savings uh, for our students are there. Uh, so we're excited to see how this um, college and high school evolves, and hopefully we can add more courses and find more partnerships with the local universities. Do we have scholarships or assistance for kids who can't pay for the even the, the smaller per credit? Yes, we do. Uh, so even with our AP exams as well, if, if kids are in need, we can we do offer and provide that to them. Um, next, I included some PSAT results. This is the 8-9 assessment, which we give to our ninth grade students. Um, you'll see we, uh, the number of students we gave to compared to the state and all, all of our, and, and all testers. I think the thing to note um, is the average total score uh, at Fox Chapel was a 10-12 compared to an 850 at both the Pennsylvania and all test takers. Uh, so our average is um, a great deal higher. Uh, another thing that the, um, the PSAT uses, the College Board uses benchmark scores, which determine college readiness. Um, based on our scores, 69% of Fox Chapel students show that they are college ready on the PSAT. This is the uh, PSAT that we would give to I'm our 10. And what percent of our kids go to college? Do we know? Uh, yeah, it's, I th we have 75% go to four-year colleges and another, I think 11, uh, don't quote me on this, 11% go to two-year uh, two schools. I think it's <laughs> a about lot the, of information going very quickly. I have questions. <laughs> yeah, no, I just wondered in comparison. Okay, yeah. carry on. Mm -hmm. Well, this um, is the ninth. These are the ninth grade scores that he was looking sure. at. Now we'll look at the eleven. Of course. Oh, these are eight nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was eight nine. So an eight nine sixty nine percent were ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Joe, if you and now here are our uh, regular PSATs. Uh, this is tenth and eleventh graders. Um, our average score was a ten sixty uh, compared to nine fifty three in Pennsylvania, nine forty two for all testers. Uh, and of students that took the PSAT, 61% um, uh, hit that benchmark score showing college readiness. So then we have our SATs. Um, our SATs uh, are, are broken up into fall and spring. Uh, you'll see that the average score in the fall was a 1246 uh, and a 1230 in the spring. Uh, and you'll see that the bar graphs here kind of compare 
uh, the state to Fox Chapel and also all testers to Fox Chapel. And you'll see our scaled scores are higher. Uh, benchmark scores for these assessments, uh, uh, same benchmark score to determine college readiness. In the fall, 83% of our students show that they are uh, college ready and 82% in the spring. And then we have the ACTs, uh, which we don't have as much participation in. It's kind of waned over the years. Uh, this gives you an idea of the last four. Uh, and you'll kind of see there's been a decrease in the number of students taking the assessment. However, our averages are higher compared to all test takers and Pennsylvania. To give you an idea of um, a, good, a good score is uh, considered to be above the 75th percentile, which changes year by year, but that's about a, a score of a 27. So the last thing I wanted to share, just some rankings uh, that I, I think, you know, rankings, they, they highlight different things, they focus on uh, different data, uh, but I think there's some things to celebrate here. Uh, so this is uh, the Pittsburgh Business Times, uh, their rankings from 2023. Uh, Fox Chapel was the number two school district in Pennsylvania uh, and the number two school district in southwestern Pennsylvania. And then you'll see our grade level rankings uh, for Keystone exams. We were number two in southwestern Pennsylvania, eighth grade number two in southwestern Pennsylvania, uh, seventh grade number four, sixth grade number three, and in fifth, third, fourth, and fifth, we were number one in southwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, the U.S. News and World Report also does a ranking, um, and uh, what we have here is uh, a national ranking for uh, the high school, uh, ranked number 762 out of nearly uh, 17 and a half thousand schools. Um, we were number 22 in Pennsylvania out of 665, number six in Pittsburgh area, um, and number 153 in in STEM high schools. DMS was ranked number 12 in Pennsylvania middle schools out of 752 schools that were ranked. And all Fox Chapel area school, elementary schools were ranked in this top 7% of Pennsylvania out of 1,452 schools. Um, to give you uh, some detailed rankings, Fairview was ranked number two. Hartwood Elementary was ranked number 33. Kerr Elementary was ranked number 101, and O'Hare Elementary was ranked number 11. Another ranking out there is uh, Niche. Uh, they have uh, a different way of, of uh, developing their rankings. Um, I think the most notable thing is they, they give a grade to every school and district, and we, are, we received A pluses for each school and as a district as a whole. And only the top two and a half percent of schools earn an A plus. So I think that's that's important to know. This last piece of data uh, was recent re recently released. Uh, it's the Education Recovery Scorecard. Um, this was a research study conducted by Stanford and Harvard, uh, and it was looking at how elementary and middle school students are recovering from the pandemic learn learning losses. It was re recently highlighted in the New York Times, um, and they, it was very interesting to kind of dig in and see how they uh, populated their data. Uh, but one of the key findings that I wanted to share, you, we were able to kind of break it down and look at our own uh, school district, um, both... Um, Mathematic, in both mathematics and reading in grades three through eight, um, it found that Fox Chapel area school districts is about three and a half years ahead um, compared to uh, the state and uh, the US averages. Um, and you'll see on the, on the line chart there um, where how we were kind of growing uh, from 16, 17 and 19, we kind of main through COVID, there was no testing, so it looks like it maintained, but then you see a little tick up, uh, a little more fluctuation in reading. It does go down slightly in 2023, but we're still above where we were previously. So that shows 
while we went through the pandemic, uh, and, and there may have been a, a blip in the radar, so to speak, uh, we have rebounded. And the last piece I wanted to share, they only, uh, this is only available for uh, mathematics, but the study um, also allowed you to map how your school district was recovered in comparison to other districts. This is all, every one of these dots represents a school district in Pennsylvania. And the further to the right you are is the further you're ahead. Um, and you'll see the very top dot there is Fox Chapel. So that really says a lot about what we've done over the last few years coming out of a, a difficult situation with the pandemic and uh, just a celebration for our, our school community, the school board, our, our teachers, our students, administrators. Um, so just uh, this is our celebration right here. And that's it. I figured we'd end on that, on a good note. So. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Well, a, a lot of good notes and uh, uh, good news there. Um, I just want to mention that we did uh, dive into this and spend more time on this in our education committee discussion. Um, and uh, we were, um, this is the first time we've really taken this granular dive. So I want to thank you for preparing all of the data and the graphs and taking many of our suggestions at that meeting and incorporating them into this new deck. And um, it's just, um, I think, critical as a data scientist myself, <laughs> that we look at the data and, and that we um, first of all celebrate, but then also dig in and see where we can continue to get better and where we might have uh, opportunities to um, to continue to improve our programs. And there's there's just a million ways to go, so you have to you have to focus and pick some pick some things. But uh, this is a great start to be able to have the the numbers in front of us and uh, and share and celebrate what we've uh, achieved and we've a tremendous amount through COVID and post. COVID. Anyone else? I'm going to go home and figure out which grade these kids were in during which parts of the pan. I, like, I feel like that was the other piece of information that would be helpful to understand mm -hmm. sort of like, okay, I'm in fifth grade now. That means I was in, I don't want to hurt my brain, but yeah. right. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, I did have one more question. Sorry, oh. my timing's terrible. <laughs> Is that all right? Go ahead. Yep, go ahead, Aria. <laughs> Sorry, um, one thing that's of interest to me is equity. Um, and certainly I know that within these numbers, we don't always have resolution about um, like the gender of students and whether there's a gender disparity in certain performance indicators or whether there's a disparity among children of color. Um, and I think uh, that's something I'd be really interested in seeing in the future. And I'll just say, I, I have every confidence that our district is serving our children. I'm so impressed by this data. There's an incredible amount to be proud of here. Um, and that would, that would be kind of my encouragement for the next step. Um, it's making sure that we're serving all children um, and that all children are showing these gains because averages mm -hmm. tend to mask um, inequities, especially among students that are underrepresented in certain subjects. So once again, congratulations to the administration and the instructional staff. This is incredible, but um, I'm, ve I'm very excited to sort of dig in further in the future. Thank you. Anything else, Dr. Eljack? That concludes the superintendent's report. Okay, thank you. Mr. Jeffrey, solicitor's report? No report. Thank you. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the combined agenda? So moved. Second. Session? Okay, for <laughs> January 8th. <laughs> Any questions or comments on the minutes? Okay, Mrs. Anuzic, could you please call the roll? Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Sitch. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. It's time for our first public comment period. Do we have anyone signed up tonight? One person. That's okay. Um, you will have three minutes to speak. I'll let you know when you have one minute left. 
Thank you. You can come on up. Uh, Phoebe Reese. Hi, I'm Susan Reese. I'm a parent of two in the district here in my personal capacity. I happen to uh, also be program director at the Project of Getting Feedback, um, which is a nonprofit dedicated to air quality across the region. And as part of my job, I coordinate 60 other nonprofits dedicated to air quality. Um, uh, and I'm here to talk about the HVAC. Um, one of the things that see, I, I'm requesting a, a little delay for a couple for three reasons. One, um, the, uh, an air sourced heat pump as one of the technology options was not on the list, and that's the way things are going. For instance, Maine is on an aggressive schedule to put uh, heat pumps in their schools. Um, they started with geothermal, and now they're moving to um, air sourced heat pumps. So that's, that's what I'd like to see as an evaluation of one of the choices with an air source pump. Um, the, it's, it's an all electric option. And um, one of the reasons we're moving towards electrifying is that, well, for one, the IRA funds are, it, they're coming, they're here. Um, and uh, as more IRA funds become available um, and the grid cleans up and there are things for energy efficiency and upgrades, an electric system will take advantage of those. Which brings me to my second thing. I have breaking news, and you may want to delay making a decision tonight because I found this hours ago. The Heinz Endowments just announced that they have created an Inflation Reduction Act coordination hub to help school districts apply for funds for the IRA. They, it's going to be launching. They announced it a week ago. It's um, launching by the end of this month. Um, and they are going to help with assembling a team of experienced technical assistants. They're going to offer a range of support, including grant writing, project development, legal guidance, and communication support. Um, I've been on calls through my job with federal agencies. They want they have to they want to give it away. Um, the and the reason why we're electrifying is the third consideration. Please consider the externalized health costs to children. By um, a, this is a generational decision that is a home decision and. Um, Gas comes from fracking. Um, a lot of the fracking in Pennsylvania actually goes to production. People don't realize that. So I don't want to like overemphasize that fracking here is all our energy. But um, the University of Pittsburgh has three our data scientists. Um, they had three reports come out this in the last six months linking the causality between a sevenfold increase in lymphoma among children. That's one of the earliest you know tissues. Um, to be impacted by cancers, the asthma rates, um, the low birth rates for, for children living near Frack Washington County adjacent to us is the most fracked county in Pennsylvania. So it, thank you. Um, thank you so much. I hope you consider a delay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on under new business. The election of the district superintendent, the appointment of Mary Kathleen Relja in the position of district superintendent of the Fox Chapel Area School District for a five year term commencing July 1st, 2024, with the beginning base salary of $237,000 under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and in accord with the agreement for appointment of superintendent as presented is approved. I move this item. Roll for a second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on this item? I'd like to thank you, Dr. Ralajak, for your leadership the last four years. Uh, you have really been through a lot in four years. <laughs> more than we were elected before you joined us, <laughs> and none of us could have been through. But uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you. And, uh, uh, challenging and so leading a district of this size and the nine member board that doesn't always agree on things. Uh, I appreciate your presence. Uh, the excellence you've uh, helped us attain. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the commitment to our district. It's appreciated. Thank you. Yes, we look forward to the next five years working with you. Thank you. So do I. <laughs> okay. And anybody who would want a copy can use the get a copy of this if they would like to, correct? Right? Okay. Mrs. Zanuzic, would you please call the roll? Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Sitch. Yes. Ms. Andrews. <clears throat> Ms. Andrews. She's still there. Mm -hmm. yes. Ms. Andrews, are you still on? Yes, I am. Your, your turn to put it on the... Sorry, the phone broke up. Yes. Motion carries. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. Next up, Mrs. Lynch, facilities and transportation. No action is requested. Okay. Hamilton Finance. Finance, we have six items. Item one, fund from fund general disbursements from fund 10, being the amount of eight million eight hundred eight thousand four hundred five dollars of virtual transfer from January 4th. 2024 to January 31st, 2024 are approved. Item two, reserves fund disbursements from fund 31, the amount of $70,135 for January are approved. Item three, finance report for December 2023 is a motion filed as attached. Item four, student activity financial report, the second quarter 2023 24, middle school high school and activity from the report. Are acknowledged and filed for audit is attached. I've authorized the advertisement of bids for the 24 25 school year for the following athletic supplies. Item six through the motion to exonerate motion to exonerate local tax collectors for Indiana Township, O'Hare Township, Lawrenceboro, Chapel Borough, and Sharpsburg Borough, and further. 23 school district real estate tax duplicates and turn over to PA Dell tax for collection of 2023 certified as delinquent by the local tax collector. I move through six items. Second. Thank you. Any other comments on these items? Okay. Mrs. Anusa, could you please call the roll? Ms. Dell. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Sitch. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Mrs. Cooper, could you please read the instruction report? Yes. First, I'm going to move on one item. That's 24. Attached. Second. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments? We did discuss this a bit last week. Uh, although I will be repeating myself, I'm going to vote against the calendar. I'm sorry. Uh, for next year, because of the increase in fall break, the loss of instructional opportunity. Future years, the number of four days in the first semester. Loss of instruction time for two and three day classes. Child care problems. Families, issues with parent teacher conferences, difficulty with scheduling for the fifth grade camp experience, uh, inequity in instruction time for first and second semester, just to name a few of the problems we see. And as a that we've talked about before, the district also remains in effect in which students are not penalized if they miss school because of the reasons. Instruction prep and touch instruction prep time for tests for projects are all modified by teachers. Accommodate students and their fam family needs. Thank you. Any other comments? I'm also not going to be voting in favor of this calendar. Uh, 
Frank are doing pretty well, but um, just the support for our families, the with the short and the academic reasons, and uh, as we heard on the academic committee, those who work closest and the support with our students support of this change. I will be voting in favor of it, and I would encourage each year when they make the calendar to be uh, and look at moving things around as needed and um, not always doing things the same every year because we've always done it that way. So I just encourage that we have some creativity as we move forward um, with this calendar, whatever may happen with our vote. Any other comments? I have a comment, um, so similar to the uh, comment, but I'm very interested in trying to find a way to make to create a more continuous schedule, one in which there are more full days. Um, I, I also, excuse me, I have five days of instruction. Um, I don't believe that a single holiday observance constitutes a law that breaks that schedule's back as far as talent goes. Um, subsequent years, I, I look at working more closely everyone involved in this process to try to understand how we can create some more continuity and it's sort of that week to week throughout the year while still observing uh, the, the contractual requirements and also the, the best of so our facilities on this project. I will be voting in favor of this calendar. Thank you. I, I am planning to vote in favor. I think that it um, there are a lot of concerns um, uh, uh, the calendar, but um, at this point, you know, very, very challenging artifact to create every year uh, because great point so many uh, complicated and connected uh, things. Uh, I think it's um, uh, I, the delays that we had last year in reevaluating were, uh, were a challenge. I think that it's important that we lock this in for the uh, so people can start making rather than get um, the absolute perfect. Uh, calendar, which I think is, uh, we could spend as much time as we want to on this. Thank you. Mrs. Anusik, would you please call the roll? No. Mr. Frank? No. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Hamilton? Yes. Mrs. Lynch? Yes. Ms. Sitch? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. No. Ms. Dad. Yes. Motion carried with six in favor and three voting no. Mrs. Cooper, Mrs. Blake, and Mr. Frank. Thank you. Mrs. Cooper, could you continue? Uh, yes, I have two other items here. Um, <coughs> second, but the first of my new motion. Um, to approve the letter of agreement as attached between the district and the Allegheny Intermediate unit uh, science collaborative for science related services to the district for the 25 years totaling $25,000. This is new whatever unit will be funded by a, a smart grant. Um, and number three is to approve the group contract with the district Inc. for lodging meals and meeting spaces for the fifth grade biomedical education program in the fall 24 dates to be determined. This is renewal on those two items. Thank you. Any questions or comments on those items? Oh, I'm sorry. So, I, we need a second. Oh, second. Questions or comments? Would anyone like to discuss the research, making sure that Camp Allegheny is agreeable <laughs> and not necessarily a fact that they use the word God in several parts of their website, it's not going to inflict on any of our children as we bring them there, that it could be a, that parents may not feel comfortable with this fact. Have we heard that, Dr. Reljack and? We have, and we are uh, essentially renting some of Allegheny does with their own homes. When we are we're just renting space. We, our own staff uh, and we I don't know, 
And so uh, we've been pleased with the relationship we've had. They've also been really responsive to concerns that we've had. And uh, I believe we've been sending students for uh, multiple years uh, and not had complaints thus far. I know there's been a lot of uh, discussion with me about their some of their beliefs and things that they espouse and they have changed their way to um, sort of lessen the the religious things that they're saying. Um, and I know we've researched other places about the cost of prohibitive. Um, perhaps I'm going to yeah perhaps in the future we can look at um, this program and continue the program and maybe find some other way to still have it without necessarily participating with the Allegheny, doing a few separate trips, things like that. Um, but uh, I wanted to, the, I don't want to deprive it even for next year. It could be looked at, so we'll still be voting for it this year. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Mrs. Anuzic, could you please call the roll? Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Sitch. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Frank, could you read the legislation and policy? I move to approve the first reading of the revised policies attached in the 221 dress and grooming, 227 paraphernalia, number 304 employment of staff, 306 employment of former school staff, 307 student intern, 308 employment contract board resolution, 311 reduction of staff, 313 compensation of employees. 314 physical examination drug screen, 314.18 HIV infection, 317 disciplinary procedure, 317.1 educator misconduct, 318 attendance and tardiness, 319 outside activities, 320 freedom of speech in non school settings, and 819 suicide prevention and response. Are you making a motion? I, I started with. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I moved to approve. Do you have any questions or comments on these policies? Okay. Mrs. Anusa, could you please call the roll? Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, since uh, Ms. is on the phone, I've asked Mrs. to read the personal report for tonight. Always my favorite part. <laughs> Sorry for any minutes. Okay. Uh, I will be moving on the following items. professional James A. Angelo. Education teacher at Fox Chapelary High School under the retirement plan. Um, the resignation of Pamela S. Barantine, French teacher from Fox Chapel Area School District under the retirement plan. The resignation of Diana G. Camp, last teacher from Joyce Middle School under the retirement plan. The resignation of Cheryl L. Enders, art teacher from Joyce Middle School under the retirement plan. The resignation of Susan A. Marino, math teacher at Fox Chapel Area High School under the retirement plan. The resignation of Kristen L. Moeller, librarian at Harvard Elementary under the retirement plan. She was in the room a little while ago, so sad to see you go. Uh, resignation, all of you, but uh, anyway. Resignation of Mary Jo Montgomery, art teacher at Fox Chapel Area High School under the retirement plan. The resignation of Deborah L. Skiles, social studies teacher at Middle School under the retirement plan and the resignation of Julie H. Foster, English teacher at Fox Chapel Area High School under the retirement plan. Under educational support, we have the resignation of Susan 
Al Pesci, building secretary at Kerr due to retirement. In supplemental contracts, resignation of Rebecca Stefania, cheerleading middle school fall um, and winter resignations for her um, due to personal reasons. Number two the, is appointments. Uh, under professional, we have Erin K. Rebish, approved as a school nurse at Fox Chapel Area High School. This position is available for the resignation of the uh, Custodial maintenance, Carrie F. Eagles is approved as a 10-month, eight-hour custodian at Fox Chapel Area High School for a probationary period. Uh, under educational support, we have Kristen O'Connell, approved as a personal care assistant at O'Hara Elementary School. Um, position is available due to the transfer of Mia Zatola. Supplemental contract non athletic. The following non athletic supplemental contract is ratified by R. Shannon, mentor teacher at Dorseyville Middle School. Under lead, professional Kelsey L. Cavanaugh, elementary teacher at O'Hare Elementary School, is approved for transferring adoption leave. Gail J. Hetu, special education. Fox Chapel Area High School is approved for child rearing and adoption leave. Erin E. Rowland, science teacher at the Middle School, ratified for medical sabbatical. Lindsay M. Seymour, art teacher at North Evo Middle School, is approved for an extension of child rearing and adoption Under leave replacement, replacements professional, we have Shawna L. Harris, ratified as a leave replacement art teacher at North Evo Middle School. Um, Emily G. Rakowski. Uh, is ratified as a second semester leave replacement science teacher at our summer programs for our STEAM camp. Stephanie R. Wright, camp program facilitator. Uh, corrections to supplemental contracts athletic. For Vanders, previously approved as baseball freshman head at the salary of 4000 approved as baseball high school JV second assistant at the salary of 2670 David Cotts, previously approved as baseball second assistant, is approved as baseball freshman head. Volunteers Athletic, the following athletic volunteer, Robert Sire, for wrestling at the high school, and the following athletic volunteers are approved Connor Ryan for Lacrosse Boys High School, and Ethan Wagner for baseball at the middle school. I move on all of this item. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on these items? Mrs. Anuzik, will you please call the roll? Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynn. Yes. Ms. Zitch. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Jim Carries. Thank you. This is, there's one more item. Yes, is there is. Okay, under personnel information item, has completed three years of satisfactory teaching and is eligible for a yes. contract or tenure, effective February 12, 2024, Elizabeth Sassel. Thank you. Mr. Good, could you read the operations and cooperative services report? Yes, first I have one item to move on and then some others. The first one is Hardware Elementary School HVAC Project Award of Bid and to approve the award of the bid to award the following bid for the HVAC Project at Harwood Elementary School to the Grand Corporation for the Hardware Elementary School HVAC Project in the amount of $767,000 for base bid number one, the purchase of the hot water mechanic equipment subject to the bidder's successful completion of the post or document. Ron Frank seconds. Thank you. Any questions or comments? We again did discuss this at length last week. We a presentation from Mr. Briggs. I just think it's important to note that this is the start of a lot of work. The electrification of our equipment is one of the most impactful things when we can do when it comes to looking at sustainability in our buildings. So taking the time to look at HVAC, to look at leads, you know, the federal government, to look at things like the New American School Program, which is a kind of 
uh, Energy, which will be having another open period in the spring of 2024 to look at projects like HVAC, solar, like all of these things that I've been talking about for quite some time with various members there's a real opportunity in front of us to make lasting impacts on the buildings of our district for the sake of our community and the children who are going to be the ones dealing the most with climate change and what goes on because of that. We know in our district we have major flooding. We know climate resilience is a part of this conversation. We have a real responsibility to be looking closely at the decisions we're making. I've said this for quite some time. Replacing boilers with boilers is not the best option. I really encourage you that we consider something different and that even if tonight's vote does not go in that direction, that we absolutely do that for all of these other projects moving forward, of which are many. Thank you. I'm very sympathetic to your argument, Ms. Lynch, but I have one vote for this. And I'll explain why. Um, the this won't be, won't be the last um, project in fact, number of projects, and we received a significant amount of uh, funding to support additional projects. Uh, unfortunately, the timeline on these projects is very. 18 months ago, and uh, at that time, uh, a lot of there was a lot about what fund, funding. There still is a fair amount of uncertainty about how what funding will be available for which type of technologies. A lot of engineering to go into with a significant. I do believe we're in a climate emergency. I do believe that we make this very high priority to move to electrification. If you looked at the analysis that was done, and I'm going to be more now. That the the short term, short -term differences uh, uh, where our electrical power from the, the carbon benefits are not huge. To, uh, if we delay, and we will be delaying more than a little, it won't be a this is the construction window that we've built up towards, and it is very narrow for open. We will actually lose carbon benefits in the short term, uh, actually significantly off in the longer term. But we have to also consider we'd also be every other project that. So they're very good, more significant projects and we would be likely spend the credit that the benefits work and we don't know exactly what credit is available for the federal government and others um we could potentially be spending more money especially if we delay the project we will almost take this uh, that would limit our uh, ability to do additional projects this is a train and the train is moving and the train goes like said Ms. Lynch, and I'd be very much in favor of, for any, very much to vote for any further projects um, uh, in the future, and I would be in favor of the board uh, doing the position as we've asked of clearly stating our intention in the direction we want to go, working uh, and on future projects that goes very deep into the uh, sustainable options. But you think in the uh, nearer term, best option both financially, but it will have to bring, bring some ecological uh, benefits in, uh, in the short term. Uh, I think in order to keep the, the very different projects we have going moving forward, we need to um, get this project going. Thank you. Any other comments? Mrs. Anuzic, could you please call the roll? No. Ms. Zitch. No. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Cooper. Ms. Dad. No. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Motion carries six in favor and three voting for Ms. Dad. Thank you. Mr. Good, could you continue, please? Absolutely. Um, two more items. First is to approve the uh, 
Fox Cutler School District in Kennywood for the Wednesday, May 29th, 2024 school day. This is the cost to the district. Number three, the Indiana University of Pennsylvania Field Experience Agreement <clears throat> approved the five year agreement as attached between the Fox Cutler and the University of Pennsylvania for internship, practicum, and clinical experience at the university students. And this is the agreement. And I move on those two items. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments on those items? <laughs> okay, Mrs. Anusik, could you please call the roll? Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mrs. Cooper. Yes. Ms. Dad. Yes. Ms. Finley. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Mr. Good. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Mrs. Lynch. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. It's time for our second public comment period. Do we have anyone signed up? Okay, thank you. Fox Chapel Educators Association. Mrs. I'm on. Um, tonight, we would like to celebrate the appointment of superintendent. The CA looks forward to collaboration, maximize learning, achievement, and uh, with On a personal note, I was new to my role as president of the CA in your first year as superintendent with the pandemic. And uh, we definitely worked closely together over the last three and a half years. I greatly respect the commitment to our district your empathy, your authenticity, and your willingness to listen to and work with us to address teachers' concerns. Tonight, we also celebrate the achievement data that shows the growth and success of our students despite the challenges of the pandemic. Uh, I think this data is a direct reflection of our teachers' efforts to meet the needs of all of our students, and I'm confident we will continue to work to grow all of our learners. Uh, we also celebrate the retirement of so many of our incredible educators. We are so grateful for the Gives us this opportunity. Uh, we'll also miss them. Thank you. Board comments. I'd uh, like to reiterate what Mrs. Mackin said and thank the teachers, council, and staff, and administrators for the uh, that we have, especially those last few pieces from the study done by. Harvard and Stanford showing how we uh, made the pandemic, how our students are doing. So thank you to everyone who works so hard with our students. We really appreciate that. And Mr. Good. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, agreeing to serve with us again uh, <laughs> for another five years. Um, I'm very happy about that um, and thank you um, to all of our uh, students who came here today. Um, that was uh, uh, an amazing demonstration of the learning that goes on. So thanks. Thank you. Mrs. Cooper. No comment. Thank you. Mrs. Zitch. I just want to say thank you again for your service to our district, Dr. Reljax. I think this data um, and the sort of fulfillment of the people that you lead in this district are all indicative of your leadership in the last four years, particularly through the pandemic. Um, and I'm just, um, I'm very excited to continue the conversations that we've been having, both as far as our relationship with um, the Fox Chapel Authority Board on major projects, as well as with the administration on things like our calendar. I think we're working to be better as a board um, and better as a sort of a community to, to do these these things with each passing year. So I'm, I'm optimistic about the future. Thank you again. Thank you. Ms. Andrews. Um, no comment. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. I just wanted to make one additional comment, uh, and I'm sure nobody noticed, but I felt terrible about this. I, last week, I commented on the, um, I think on on, on the the Stead Sanford study, and then uh, this today we talked about it again, and I, I praised and thanked everybody except for the kids themselves and their families. <laughs> um, they, they they did the work, <laughs> and uh, their families did a heck of a lot of work, and uh, I was 
fortunate to have a high schooler who was very much able to do it herself for the most part. But I know there were so many, many uh, parents who had to uh, take off work and be at home and do so much to um, to make that pandemic uh, experience not uh, not as bad or not and not result in learning loss for their kid. And it, and it took a it took a village and um, the parents and the kids themselves so were, were resilient and that was a significant part of our success, no doubt. So thank you all. Thank you, Mrs. Lynch. Um, I mean, I, I totally echo the idea of our parents and kids, but our teachers as well, just all con congrats and thank you to them for just a spectacular job over one of the most complex and difficult experiences probably of their careers, right? And so I think there can't be enough said for um, just how quickly they took on the task of changing modalities and uh, reaching our kids' needs and just um, with complete success, clearly. Um, I want to say, too, that, you know, I really, really hope that this board and our administration hears loud and clear that sustainability is a hugely important thing for us to be considering and making progress on. It should not be something that is thought of later in a process. It should be at the start of every one of these projects, of every one of these processes. We have, I have seen over the four years that I've been on the board that we are exceptional in this district at grant writing and at finding the monies that exist and at getting them into our district. Um, I think back to the emergency connectivity funds. I think back to any number of other times where we have accessed all kinds of money uh, in order to bring the best things to our district and to the future of our buildings and our students. And I think this is just one more of those opportunities to really be looking. The Renew America School funds that will be coming out this spring seem ripe for that conversation. And I hope that we find projects that fit and that we go after the monies that are out there. Uh, and I just to uh, Mr. Hamilton's comment about a resolution of the board, I think that is an absolutely fabulous idea and would be very excited and happy to work on that and uh, get that in place. So, Thank you, Ms. Finley. <clears throat> Um, in regards to the HVAC, I, I'm hoping that we will now will come up with other ways. I did not want to vote no on this, mainly because there was so much hinging on future stuff. But for any of the other upcoming HVACs in several other schools, I, I am hoping the greener is better. And I hope we can work towards that on the other ones. I just hesitated on that. Um, please call in before 12 p.m. on the day of this meeting so you can voice your opinions via phone if you cannot make it here. I just want to stress that the number is 412-967-2413 or email at the board because I saw just before coming into this meeting we had two emails um, both dealing with the HVAC system, but I would love to hear more people rather than finding out like 30 seconds prior so I can talk to people. Um, I think it's important that we hear everyone and this is a way that you can still talk to us even if you can't make this meeting. Um, we have members of the Fox Chapel High School who made honors uh, student of the month at Beatty. We have three of them. Um, one is in veterinary services, Mr. Frank, you. I don't remember the other two. Yes, but we have three students who mm -hmm. did make the honor of student of the month, um, yes. honor student of the month, student of the month yes. there. So I just want to acknowledge them. Um, and thank you to all our students who showed up tonight. And thank you to the teachers and Dr. Reljak, uh, thank you for choosing to continue with us for another five mm -hmm. years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frank. <clears throat> yes, I'd like to thank the authority board for their valuable expertise uh, in the many projects that they, they help our district in planning and, and carrying them out. I'd like to congratulate and thank Dr. Railjack. Uh, and although they still have the second semester to go, a big thank you to the professionals that are listed as retiring in, in tonight's agenda. 
a lot of uh, very, very good experience for, for our students and district, included in those retiring. So thank you. Thank you. Um, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.